You nominated Mahatma Gandhi as your hero. Why? Oh, I mean, he's an amazing, amazing man. And um, for me, the, the way that he uh, really transformed himself before he began to challenge other people and led a, a non-violent resistance against the British Empire and, and ended up winning. Um, yeah, I mean, I've read, read a lot of his, his works and his uh, sort of biographies and stuff and a very fascinating uh, person. I guess it's also interesting that uh, we tend to put these people in history up on a pedestal, whereas if you read a lot about him, he was actually a pretty weird kind of guy and did some sort of pretty freaky, questionable things. Um, and I think you know, everyone has their... Um, a lot of people do great things, but also have a have another side, and I think it's important that we see both both sides. Otherwise, you know, we put guys like Martin Luther King and, and women like Dorothy Day up on on pedestals that uh, we, we think is untenable. If you look closer, their lives they're just like uh, you and me. Flawed. Yeah. Do you like history, and why do you like history? Uh, yeah, I enjoy it. I think we can learn so much from it. And I think in the, the sort of the age that we're living in, it, it's, it's all just about information. And you know, if you don't know something, you can jump on Wikipedia. Uh, and we've got more information than we've ever had before, but not necessarily knowledge. Like a lot, a lot of people you know, tend to know a little bit about a lot, but are we really learning from, from the past and or are we just sort of re re repeating things? Uh, and so I think it's really important uh, as a society if we're going to progress on issues that we are learning from the past and we are able to draw parallels from things that, that happened way back, you know, with the uh, abolition of s slavery to um, you know, recognition of, uh, of uh, ab Aboriginal uh, people to right up to today with the whole marriage equality debate. I think it can be really be seen as progression in society. What sort of lessons do you take from history in your own leadership and your leadership of the of the national team? Oh, I'm not sure. I think with perhaps humility might be one. Yeah, I think that's important. Um, I mean, with with leadership in rugby, I think a lot of it is well for, for me has been uh, my experience under other captains. Uh, coaches, what I think's worked, uh, what hasn't worked, what I don't want to be, uh, what, I, what I'm trying to be, and also just learning. I mean, this this year, captaining through the June test, I've, I've learned so much, and uh, hopefully continue to learn a lot more. So is it to lead through example? Well, I think first and foremost, you've got to lead, lead by example. But I think to be a, a, a great leader, which... I'm by no stretch of the imagination a great leader. It, it's it's so much more than that. So I guess that that's what I've got to got to learn and, and continue. How do you handle pressure? Handling pressure. For me, I think it's uh, having the knowledge that you've done all the all the hard work. That your preparation has been uh, not just sufficient, but you've you've. You've done everything you can, really, um, and then yeah, you, you're, you're fairly confident that you can deal with uh, anything that comes. So it doesn't particularly bother you the the expectations of of the community. You don't take those expectations on yourself as such. I think I think they're always there. Uh, the thing with I'd say a lot of sports people is that they're often their own worst critics. So. Sure, there's a whole lot of expectations from other people involved, whether it's you know, people close to you or just uh, you know, general public supporters, etc. Your own expectations of yourself are often often a little bit higher. So, um, yeah, first and foremost, you want to try and uh, make sure that you feel right about your performance. You've now moved to the the next stage of your career. You've um, moved across the country from Perth uh, to Canberra. Uh, to settle in, to start the next three years of your playing career here at the Brumbies. 
first impressions of Canberra? What are they? I've loved it so far. It's been great. Uh, the first week was pretty chilly. Um, <laughs> bit of a change from Perth. But yeah, I think the, big, the biggest thing for me is, has uh, just been you know, the amount of parkland and uh, wildlife around. Um, I guess growing, growing up on a farm, you always appreciate that and try and get back to that as much as you can. So it really doesn't feel like the sort of the big city where you, you never really get out of it. Next year is Canberra's uh, 100 years centenary. Um, it's a time um, to celebrate uh, 100 years of, of the uh, um, Australian uh, democracy, of the home of the Australian democracy here in Canberra. What are your reflections on Canberra as the as the home of the of the national parliament? Hmm. Well, it's such a fascinating place. I mean, growing up, you know, you you saw Sydney Olympics and you knew you knew about Melbourne. You knew Canberra was the the capital just from geography lessons, but you you knew nothing really about it. So finding out a little bit more about its history. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, I've, I found that fascinating. Um, Which parts of Canberra's history did you uh, have you found fascinating? Well, just getting getting set up, I guess. I always just thought it was sort of they were fighting between Melbourne and Sydney, so they put it in the middle. Um, where someone else was telling me it was also they didn't want the capital being on the coast, uh, and being inland was a lot more secure. Um, and I guess. Uh, Burley Griffin, who did all the designs, and how the bulk of it is sort of to their designs, but they ended up scrapping a lot of what they had planned. Um, that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's, it's been interesting, and, and I've really enjoyed it so far, so I'm really looking forward to the next three years and calling it home. And by calling it home, how do you make those links and, and establish home for someone like a professional rugby player who spends a lot of time uh, on the road? That's a good question. I think f firstly you turn up to work and you've already got you know, 30, 40 friends um, and, yeah, and you spend a lot of time with them so it's been good getting to know the guys in the team and, and playing for the Wallabies I already knew half a dozen of them uh, fairly well so I guess that gives you a fairly good base of, of uh, I guess a family away from away from family um, and then from there hopefully making making some friends outside of rugby and, and uh, you know a few links in the community and and doing a bit of stuff around, around the place. Well there's lots of places to to uh, feed your mind good luck with your time in Canberra and thanks for joining us. Thanks a lot for having me.